All right, everybody. Happy Maker Monday. Welcome to month one of Traverse. We are going to talk flying geese today. Um, I have a couple of ways I like making flying geese, but I have one that is my absolute favorite. It's about the only way I will really do it now, simply because the perfection is worth the extra little step. Okay, so the elements that we're making in this first section are those those four flying geese sections right there. Okay, um, I'm going to show you all put them them all put together at the end. The pattern gives you um, the the steps to make the geese to make these in the pattern is the same as what I'm about to show you. What I did differently was I used a block lock flying geese triangle trimmer. This is a one and a half by three inch finished triangle or flying geese triangle by block lock. Um, these are available on the sale as well as on the website, on my website, fivemonkeycoats.com. Um, I'm gonna show you how this makes perfection. Now in the pattern, she gives you the size, I think in the, the pattern says four and a half by three and, or two and five eighths. I hate measuring five eighths. So instead, and since I'm gonna use a trimmer that's gonna trim this down to perfect size, I cut my big blocks four and three quarters. Wait, that number went on my head. Four and three quarters is what I cut my big blocks. My small squares I cut two and three quarters. So that's just a little bit bigger than what the pattern says to do them. Um, you've got plenty of extra fabric, so don't worry about that part. So we're gonna cut our blocks out just like the pattern tells you how many, it's gonna tell you how many blocks you need of both the big size and the small sizes. Um, and only for this technique, cut them out just slightly larger than that. So add like a quarter inch to your big blocks and round the, the five eighths up to three quarters on the small blocks, okay? The way that I like to make flying geese, let me flip this around. I like to do the four at a time method. So if you've ever done the thing where you have a triangle and then you have a square and you sew the square and you cut away what I like to call goose poop. You know, you sew here and then you cut away this whole bit out here. You throw a lot of fabric away that way. And as much as, you know, I'm all for um, trimming things down and having a little bit of waste to get perfection, you do throw a lot of fabric away when you do the goose, I call it the goose poop method. So what I've done is I have my big block and my small block, I've drawn a line down the middle. I'm gonna show you a couple of different ways to get here as well. I'm gonna line up this block and this block. Okay, so my line down the middle pretty much lines up. Let me flip it this way. You can, if you want to, lay these here and then draw your line if you choose to. I just marked mine ahead of time. You can pin this if you choose to. Most of the time, I just do this when I get to the, get to the machine. So I'm gonna show you each step for each one, okay? So here's the method where I drew the line down the block. Here's the method where instead of drawing a line, I pressed it with my iron, okay? So I just folded it in half and pressed it with the iron. Some people really don't like drawing lines. I get it, I don't prefer it either, but I can stand there and press it all day long. On darker fabric, sometimes this is really helpful because you can see it on the darker fabric or sometimes you can't see the mark on the dark fabric. It doesn't matter if your pressing is up or down, just so long as you can see it when you put it down. Okay, so we've marked a line on one, we've pressed a line on another one. My machine has a laser line, so I'm not gonna put anything on this one. These are just plain blocks, and we're gonna put both on this way. Okay, now I have one other one that I've marked the lines on as well. These are all the color combinations too. How amazing are these color combinations? Can we just talk about that for a second? And this one, I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna pin it. I've got my line marked, but I'm not gonna pin it. I'm just gonna carry it like that. We're gonna go to our machine and we're gonna talk sewing. I have a quarter inch guide foot on my machine. See my guide right there? 
and my needle is in my center position. I'm gonna drop my foot down. Now my machine has a pivot feature on it, which is really handy for doing this kind of chain piecing and I chain piece everything. I'm gonna use my guide and run it along that, whatever my demarcation thing that I have on each block, I'm gonna use my, my quarter inch piecing foot as kind of a rudder. And I'm just gonna run that down whatever mark I've made on both sides. So what this is doing is I'm sewing a quarter inch to either side on all of these techniques. All right, so we're gonna sew a quarter inch down one side. Now this one, remember I said I didn't pin it? If you wanna live dangerously, go ahead. Here's the beauty of this technique. Since we're gonna trim these blocks down, if it's not perfect, you're gonna trim it down anyway. So I get to about here, and then I lay the second one down. Okay, make sure that that little, call it the rudder for this purpose, is right along that line. Now, my machine has a laser line. If I turn my laser line on, a couple things are gonna happen. One, I've discovered that with my camera, this weird disco light happens when I'm trying to film my laser light, so I will try very hard not to give anybody a stroke. Um, but what I've done is I've lined my laser line up with, see if I can make that disco light less and still see the, well, I don't know. So the laser line is running right along that rudder now. So if I put my fabric in, oh look, green fabric fixes it. If I put my fabric in and I've got that laser line matched up with the point of my triangle, I don't have to mark anything. Okay, so here's my the fold of my triangle. My laser line is just gonna kind of ride along that point. Now I left the, the quarter inch foot on because that gives me something easy to line the um, the laser up to, but just make sure that the laser runs right off the end of this point and you don't got to mark nothing. Okay, I'm going to turn that off before it makes everybody crazy. I'm going to take my blocks out, turn them around, let me separate them all and we're gonna sew along the other side. Now the marking technique is the same no matter what you've got. I won't make you guys deal with the laser again, but we have the same line on this side. We're just gonna run it down the other side. I still use that quarter inch foot right down the middle. No matter which technique that you use to mark your, tri your um, squares, you just use that quarter inch foot is sort of like a like a like a like a training wheel okay so we're gonna sew all of these and I won't make you watch the laser line on the last one okay now we're gonna cut these apart and then we're gonna go cut them apart all right now I've got all four of my color blocks with the seam on both sides of my line. We're going to pull all of our pins out. Now you can either cut this with scissors if you want to. If you're feeling really brave, you can line them up, but I don't, I don't cut through more than one color at a time. Now you can take some big scissors and you can cut through, or you can line up your ruler and just cut right down the middle. If you'd rather cut with scissors, that's fine. You can just um, cut right down the middle of this. Since you're really just trying to get about a quarter inch seam allowance, and we're not going to match anything up based on this seam allowance, it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so however you want to get there, cut all of these apart. I find that being a quilter and I've lined up a ruler so often, I can almost cut with a rotary cutter faster than I can with scissors. I'm gonna stack all of them up. Now normally, you're gonna do, I don't remember how many of each color you do, but you're gonna do whatever the pattern calls for. I normally do one color at a time, but since I'm showing you each color, I'm gonna stack them all like this, and we're gonna take it to the pressing. 
All right, so we have these really pretty triangles that do not yet look like geese. I like steam in this process as well because, because we sewed them like this and since we're going to trim them down, you don't have to worry too much about um, stretching out the bias. And if you set your seam first and then just use the weight of your iron to press your blocks up, you're not going to get a whole bunch of distortion anyway. And look at how nice and crisp that lays. So I'm going to press all of my blocks until they look like these cute little hearts. I know this looks weird now if you haven't done this, done flying geese this way before. Um, but the other tip I'm going to give you when you press these, set your seam, press the top one up first, whichever side that is, because it's going to alternate a little bit. But by not pulling on your fabric and distorting it, you're still going to get a nice straight piece. Okay, and since we're going to use our block lock to trim this down, it's all going to go together so nicely anyway. All right, now, when you get these all pressed so they look like this, we're going to take whatever the coordinating fabric is to here, these other ones that we've already put our lines on, and we're going to put it right there. All right, so line those up and we're going to do the same thing we did before where we sewed across both blocks, but we're only going to sew across one. And I'm going to show you a tip for getting those really straight. So let's get all of these pinned together and I'm going to give you a tip for putting these on. All right, let's go to the machine. All right, so we still have our quarter inch foot on. If you line these up and you sew from this end first, you can not only put your quarter inch foot on that line, but your needle is gonna butt up right there in that point, because that's a quarter inch away from the end. So you can start in that little point and sew right off the edge with your, your little rudder guiding your space, right? I like sewing from this direction. You can't do it both ways. You can only do it one direction because you got to come up the other way from the other way. But the first seam, I typically will sew this direction just because I know that it's lining up just right. I don't have to think about it. So we're going to sew up this side. Oops. Let's slow down a little bit. Sew up this side and down the other side. So when you're coming from this way, when you're going up the other side, if you were going to come from this direction, this is the other reason I like to chain piece because, because you're starting kind of off of a point. When you chain piece, the fabric from the previous stitching is holding everything up and then things line up easier. All right, so we're going to sew like that down this side. We're going to cut them and flip them and sew them the other side, and then we're going to go and cut. All right, we've got all of our pieces all chained together, okay? So we're going to separate them. I'm just going to snip these apart, and just like we did when we cut the other direction, you can either use scissors or your rotary cutter, whichever makes you happier. Pull our pins. So whichever you prefer, if you like scissors better, oops, I didn't sew the other seam to that one. Don't cut that one. If that makes you happier, or this does, doesn't really matter so long as you get them all cut apart. Okay, so now what we have is shapes that look like this. They're kind of opposite. So I will take all of mine and stack them because they're easier to press that way. So go ahead and cut them all apart. And then we're going to press them. 
All right, so I have pressed all of my pieces out. We've pressed them all out toward the new wings. I'm going to use my block lock ruler. Now, you know, we did this all to the right size and proportion, and we steamed everything. And because I pressed everything with flatter, everything lays nice and crisp and sharp. Um, I did that in my prep process. This trimmer, though, is going to make everything so pretty. So I'm going to take my trimmer, and I'm going to set it right there in the crack. And it's going to push up into the seams that I've pressed. I'm going to cut the right side and the top. And then I'm going to turn my mat around. And I'm going to cut the right and the top again. And now I have this perfect flying geese with a perfect seam allowance at the top. Let me show you that again. You drop the you drop the trimmer right into the space, lock it into that triangle groove. It sticks in there, so it grabs a hold of that seam allowance because that's why we pressed it out. It grabs a hold of that seam allowance and it doesn't let it go. Now if you don't have a rotating mat, you can trim the two sides and you can turn the cutter around but you want to make sure that when you turn it, that you grip it back into that space before you cut the two sides again. So yeah, you get some quilter spaghetti over here, but look at how perfect that quarter inch is right there. And by getting that perfect quarter inch is how when you sew them to each other, you don't cut any of the points off. Look at how perfect those points are. If you've ever tried to sew flying geese together and you snip that little tip off all the time, this is going to help get you there. This is the first step to help get you there. I'm going to show you how to sew them to each other as an extra little tip so that you don't clip the tops of your, of your geese's wings off. All right, so I'm going to finish trimming all of these, and then we're going to go back to the machine and sew them to each other, and I'm going to give you some tips there too. Isn't this just instantly gratifying? I love this process. All right, so I'm going to trim all my blocks down, and then we're going to go back to the machine. Now, I don't pin for this step. Um, I'm just going to take two. Now, when I go to join these together, the pattern has us putting our geese kind of flying in formation. We all want them to go one way. So I'm going to match up my um, seam side or my long side with the point the pointed side right so they're going to end up going like that so when I put those together like that what I really want to happen is I want my needle to cross come on zoom in or get clear there we go I want my needle to cross right there like one threads length inside that little X so I will also chain piece this because I get better results when I'm chain piecing. Go kind of slow because you've got lots of um, seams to get through. So I'll sew to about here, right about the time that my foot gets to where it's going to hit those seams. And then I make sure that everything's really straight. Then as I'm sewing across where that X is, I make sure that the needle hits this side of the X. So even if there's sort of a little like jump there, it doesn't really matter because the when I press everything together, it's all gonna um, it's all gonna line up because the fabric's gonna fill in the fill in the gaps. So I'm just gonna chain piece all of these together with that technique of the needle hitting just the right side of that X on every single one of these. And then I'm going to give you one more pressing tip and we'll be all done. All right, now when I'm pressing these, I want to press them toward this piece, not this piece. Okay, this piece that has less bulk in it is the way that we want to press them. So I'm going to set my seam just like I did with all my other pressing and I'm going to press this out. And if you do it real soft and careful, you'll get all of those seams to lay nice and smooth. 
and look at your points. Isn't that pretty? It's so pretty. So we're going to press all of them like this and then we're going to sew them together in the patterns um, in the configuration that the pattern has them. Now these all make two rows. I sew mine together in groups of four and then sew those four together the way that they need to lay out. Um, some of them point in and, and I don't remember how many there are in each row. But as I get all my rows put together, the last thing I do when I've got a nice long strip like this is I will flip this over and just give it an extra little press, pressing everybody the same way. Since we pressed all toward those more solid side of the of the wings, it's all they're all going to be facing that way already, but just because we've been fussing with it and handling it, I like to give it an extra little press all the way down the whole set. Look at how beautiful that setup is. Isn't that great? So hopefully I gave you some good tips. Let's talk about the tool that we used. All right, are you ready to put your geese together for Traverse? I hope so. This was a whole bunch of fun and kind of instant gratification. So the only tools we really talked about on today's sale was the one and a half inch by three inch flying geese block lock trimmer tool. This is the size you're gonna need for this. And I didn't show it in this video, but I did talk about it in the prepping video. The fig scented flatter is what I used when I prepped all my fabric. Flatter comes in um, six different smells and flavors. I've posted all of that in today's video. So um, get you some, it's gonna help this process a lot. All right, so go wrangle your geese. See you next time, bye.